Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the previous video we were talking about query parameter from our controller like this and we found out one small problem and uh, this video we will just try to fix that. Okay, so first of all if you just try to if you wanted to explicitly transform the string query parameter to an appropriate type then you can just transform it as a true. So whatever the attribute you are getting in the query parameter like string, boolean, number automatically that will get transformed through this because the query parameter in the network request are coming as a string so you have to explicitly transform it so we have to just pass the transform through in the validation pipe that's enough because query uh, and if you are just passing one single parameter that is fine but what if you are expecting uh, multiple arguments in the query parameter then you have to write a DTO right and we were facing one small problem in DTO is about the validation of a boolean right so I have to just try out the different options which NSJS documentation was providing this transform is the the right one because what happens when you are passing uh, properties like this filter equal to false right so for the network request these query parameters are being passed as a string in that case every string when it we transform that to a boolean comes out to true always so here I have to try it like this if value is true then return true if value is false then return false okay this is just a custom transform you have to get from the class transformer uh, all, all the other things we are getting from the class validator okay now all the things are fine we are hitting this uh, filter false so what it is doing is, is we are getting the filter property false I just try to log it here that what we are getting in the filter property the boolean property which is either true and false you can add other arguments also like name right this is of type string so you have to add this in the DTO only so it can be like uh, name is of type string and all the other things is defined each string you can just add right now this is another property which we have added in our DTO and this should be defined and should be available now you can use this from the request parameter right so this is the basic quick overview because request parameter query parameter request body all these things are important how to capture the data from there and NSJS is providing these good validation with the help of DTOs where you can extract out all the required parameters with validation done okay now next thing what we will do is some kind of validation we can add like uh, on the delete also you can add a validation uh, if you are not getting any ID if you are passing invalid ID which doesn't exist in database then you can just directly set this exception like we have done it here so in delete first of all what we try to do is I mean I'm just talking in simple terms let's see if you are doing a delete task and you got the ID which you have to look into database first right first of all you have to find it out okay this particular ID is even exist or not right so here what we do is we just try to say this we can write this logic or we can just put this logic somewhere where we can reuse this and these both the functions can call this particular function right here we will just try to see okay if task task dot length is not great equal equal to zero in this particular case we have to say because nothing is found right so we just return this exception otherwise things are good we got the task length right we'll just filter it out and we'll just splice it out or whatever you wanted to do here we are simply doing just again finding and just returning the remaining results and we are setting it right okay so what all things we have covered so it is like a quick closer on this task module we are able to see how you can actually write async controllers how you can write basic apis how you can get the data in the in the request body what are the different ways to respond to a particular exception through controllers 
I mean, it's just a express view of returning data because we are getting the response from the express. Otherwise, you can simply do is return. Right? We don't need this response decorator. So even if you are throwing some exception, NestJS will handle it. Okay, so the basic API is about Nest. Now what we can do next is we can just talk about adding some kind of a database. Let's see, like, like we can start with Mongoose, how we can introduce MongoDB database on top of this. And same kind of set of APIs we can write for shopping cart. We'll have a MongoDB collection, cart collection, and you will just write these APIs. In this case, we are just dealing with the store data service and managing the Node.js level of internal storage. But now we'll have MongoDB where you can create, update, delete, task. So we can have a multiple collection. So a few things we have to see. First of all, how to introduce the Mongoose module with the NestJS, how to create the schema models, and how to access the schema model. Okay, thanks everyone.